about healing in advance. Listen. Listen to me carefully. How could you ever have faith for healing if that's the truth? Could you ever have had faith to be saved if you thought God may or may not save you if you prayed? Could you have faith to have been saved if you thought it just may not be God's will to save you? I think you see the point of what we're talking about. A vital part of the message is there is a gospel of healing. To use King James terminology, and I like to do that. I know this generation may not be as familiar with it as us of a previous generation, but I love King James. I, I love the, the way King James expresses things. It does it in such a way. The uniqueness of it uh, helps me to remember. And to use King James terminology, I'm going to declare to you today that healing is the children's bread. Healing is provided to the covenant people of God. The message of healing for sickness and disease is a part of the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, today we're talking about something that there is much confusion and speculation about, even among the body of Christ. As is true of any subject, our emphasis on the subject of healing should mirror the place that God gave it in the Scripture. And it should mirror the emphasis that Jesus placed on it in His earthly ministry. And when you use that guideline, I'm afraid we've fallen short. And often, as a result of that, we've left healing grace on the table. It was there for us, but we didn't partake for it. I believe that God's word holds provision for supernatural healing, but this blessing, like many other blessings of God, has often been suppressed. So I want to be careful today throughout the time that I'm up here to state some things, and I want you to know that I'm stating these things intentionally, and I want to make sure that these succinct truths come, come through throughout this message. First of all, you and I must realize today that sickness is not of God. Amen. Sickness is not of God. As a matter of fact, I believe it grieves the Father for His children to believe that He has something to do with it. Dr. Pike talked about it last week. I heard Latrissa mention it today. God's for us. He's not against us. He doesn't send sickness. Sickness is not a tool that God uses to teach his children something. Just not. Now that doesn't mean that in the middle of it, in the process, like anything we go through, trouble is not something God sends to teach you something. Any negative thing that happens is not something he sends to send, but you can learn something through it. You can come out of it better than you went into it. And the thing we have to understand is whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, God said that he's able to turn that thing around and make the end result. What the devil means for us for evil, God can make it into something good for us if we will allow him to. But he does not send it. Don't you forget that. Second thing is I want you to understand, we can't, we can't miss this. Healing is a part of the gospel. 
I mean, that probably needs to be said at least a dozen times this morning. Healing is a part of the gospel. We can't minimize it. It's a major part of the gospel. Healing is God's will for his people. It's God's will. Healing is part of Calvary's glorious provision for the people of God. Healing is a gift of grace. You don't get healed because you're a good boy. You don't get healed because you give a big offering. Just like you don't get saved by any of those things. But God's wonderful, matchless, marvelous grace made a provision for you and me. That by grace through faith, we can receive forgiveness of sins. We can receive cleansing. We can receive deliverance. We can receive healing. We can receive the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's all a gift of grace. But God said his people are often destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. You know what? There's a lot of people in the grave today because they didn't know that healing was something that God provided for them. I believe there's a lot of wonderful Christian people that died young because they, did, they, had, they weren't taught. They didn't understand. They didn't see it. They, they, they didn't hear the gospel message so that God could cause faith to arise within them so that they could reach out and receive the benefit of healing. He said, his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but in Psalms 107 verse 20 it says, he sent his word. Listen to this now. He sent his word. And healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Isn't that awesome? God's word, he sent his word and healed them. So I want to talk about this for just a little bit. Y'all stay with me. Y'all pull with me. There's a truth here. There's a message here. God wants to get into us and he wants to help our faith to come to a new level to operate in the fullness of his grace. He doesn't want us to receive the grace of God in vain. He doesn't want there to be something that he's provided for us that we leave on the table when he, he wants us to. It's the children's bread. Amen? So we've got to get the right mindset about some things. The Bible says that we must have our mind renewed by the word of God. So understand the things that I'm going to be talking about going forward right here are going to involve you and I letting God renew our mind to where our belief system and our thoughts are in line with the Word of God. Don't worry about the world. You're not of the world. Don't worry about higher education. The Bible says there's a bunch of people in the last days that's ever learning, but they're never coming to the truth. There's some people in our, I didn't aim to say this, maybe I better not. There's some people, <laughs> there's some people in our land today that call themselves progressives because of the way they think and approach things, but it's obvious to me that the progressives are putting us further and further behind. They don't get it. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna relate to this thing according to the Word of God. We've got to get the might, right mindset about sickness. You see, I'm afraid that too many of us have gotten okay with sickness. I mean, if we're not careful, we'll just take it laying down. No pun intended. No, actually, there was pun intended.
I'm, I'm going to speak truth to you right now. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is not your friend. We're getting our mind right about it. Listen to this. Sickness is warfare. There is a part of sickness that is, it ain't all physical. Now the world thinks it is. And the world approaches it as if it's all physical. It's all about a germ. It's all about you Catching something, coming in contact with something, exposing yourself to something. And I, I'm not saying that that's altogether 100% wrong. But you better understand something. It ain't all physical. There's a spiritual aspect of it. I'm going to give you some proof right now. You just, you just determine that you're going to do something because God has called you to do it. You're going to sing a special in church. Isn't it ironic how the night before is when you can have strep throat? You're going to go on a witnessing mission with a team. Isn't it something how the morning that you get up, all of a sudden you have diarrhea? Oh, I just ate something. No, it's warfare, dummy. You can't, you, you can't see that? You can't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was for me, the dummy part, not you. That's the way I talk to myself, okay? I'm sorry. That's why it slipped out that way. You ain't smart enough to figure that out? You know, I, I, I get after myself. I'm telling you, there is a spiritual aspect of it. Do you remember how, how sickness got here in the first place? It's part of the aftermath of sin that the enemy got it into God's creation by tricking them and deceiving them. And a part of the aftermath and the outcome of it was that death and sickness came upon God's creation. It, it wasn't anything that, uh, that God intended to happen. Sickness is a tool of the enemy. Christian, you really need to view it this way. You need to lock that away. You need to understand it is a tool of the enemy to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yes, to steal, kill, and to destroy. Do you understand? That is the absolute only motive the devil has toward you. He hates you. He hates what you stand for. He hates the notion that you might find yourself in the will of God and that you might arm yourself with the full armor of God. And that you might do the will of God and the work of God in this generation. He, he is threatened by you. He hates you. And he wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. He doesn't want you to have a minute's peace. He doesn't want you to have a day that is joyful. He doesn't want you to have a pain-free day. He doesn't want you to have a long, fulfilled life. He hates you. He came to steal, kill, and to destroy. And through sickness, the enemy hinders many a person from experiencing the abundant life and from actively pursuing God's will and destiny. As I said before, church, you and I cannot get okay with sickness. It's not just, all; oh, it's just everybody has it, you know. It ain't no big deal. If you have that attitude about it, you'll have plenty of it. (laughs) 
I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just helping us find out where we're at, okay? We're, we're getting an adjustment on our mindset. But can I say this? Many Christians actually find a certain identity with sickness and disease. I want to clarify what I mean for that. by that. If we're not careful, I have to watch this too. I promise you, I have to watch it. The Holy Spirit reminds me. I pray the Holy Spirit remind you as well. But if we're not careful, we will talk about our ailments so much that it will compromise a major percentage of our conversation and our ailments. In other words, the mountain will become bigger than our God. Listen, I know for a fact, I've been there, I've experienced some of this. If you're in pain, especially if you've got the kind of pain that's just constant pain. I don't know how many of you have experienced that. But if you live in pain, you just it, it's not something that you forget about easily. And you want people to understand what you're dealing with. And so you tend to talk about it a lot. You talk about it so much that it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more of an issue in your life. And, and you focus less and less upon the provision of Calvary and God's promise and seeking Him and claiming that. Let me illustrate further. People that have the wrong mindset about sickness and healing tend to say things like this. Well, it seems like everything that goes around, I get it. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I reckon I might as well just go ahead and get it. I might as well just, we just might, might as well run through our family and we get it behind us. You ever heard anybody talk that way? Well, the kids come home and Johnny gave it to Susie and and now Susie's got it. I reckon we just might as well drink after him and go ahead and get it so we can get it over with. <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. People that don't understand what I'm talking about today say things like, you know, I believe I'm coming down with the flu. Think about that. Think about that. We don't, we don't think about it when we say it. I believe. That's right. Stop right there. I believe I'm coming down with the flu. And the devil says, devils, demons, He's already opened the door. Get him. <laughs> People that have a wrong mindset. People that don't understand what I'm talking about say things like, well, that's what happens when you get a little older. At your age, you just might as well expect some of that. No, I ain't. I'm not expecting it. I'm not taking it laying down. I resist it like I resist temptation. I resist it with the word of God. I quote the scripture about it. I might be getting older, but he says, I'm renewed. My youth is renewed. Thank God for that. We've got to get our mindset right. People that don't understand this thing, what we're talking about, they come to own things that God doesn't want us to own. Listen to me now. People come to take ownership of things that God never intended for us to own. They say things like this. My arthritis is giving me a fit this morning. Oh, it's yours? <laughs> you 
You got a title deed to it somewhere? My allergies really acting up this morning. Back when I had my heart attack, you see what I'm talking about? We, we assume ownership of these things, and the devil says, Oh, okay, that's yours now, buddy. For as long as you live, if you, if you call it yours, it's yours. I, I won't take it back from you. I gave it to you, and, and you can keep it. No threat. And we go around saying, It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Holy Spirit, help us. When we, when we carelessly say these things, I pray that God bring this message to all of our remembrance. And we realize just out of whack we're, we're doing this thing. You see, God says He's provided deliverance. So... The thing that I believe that God wants us to understand and embrace today is through grace, He wants you and I to get on the war path against sickness and disease. I mean, church, how about we get a little Holy Ghost backbone about us? Huh? How about we stand up for what God stands up for? How about we fight for what God fights for? How about we agree with what God said about it? But we're going to have to make a decision that we're going to have some backbone about this thing. And we're, we understand it's a battle. We're an army dressed for battle. It's what we sang this morning, right? If we don't get to the place that we quit being compliant with everything that the devil dishes out, soon he'll have us homebound and shut in and shut down. This is serious business. This is serious business. I want to show you scripturally what I mean today, okay? Uh, God sends his word and heals. He sends his word. And faith comes by hearing. You don't even realize it right now. But those of you that are open to it and those of you that have your receiver on and those of you that are listening to the Spirit of God, already there's something happened in your spirit, man. Faith is beginning to stir inside of you. Because God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. It would be impossible for you to have faith for healing unless you heard God's word on healing. That's how you got saved, wasn't it? That's how you get anything by grace. Healing is a major component of the gospel and we have to contend for it. Listen to this. Luke 13, verse 16. Jesus said this. This is in red in my Bible. It says, And ought not this woman... You remember the woman that came. And Jesus healed her. She'd been in the shape she was in for 18 years. Jesus said, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham... Whom Satan hath bound lo these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. There's two things I want you to note in Jesus' statement. First of all, he said that this woman was a daughter of Abraham. In other words, she was a covenant person. There was a covenant provision for her. Just like every child of God here. Okay. Second thing I want you to see that Jesus said about this situation. He said, this is a woman that Satan had bound for 18 years. He likened her 
illness and her disease to satanic bondage. So you see, you and I have to get our theology right this morning. Jesus said it like this in the 10th chapter of John. The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. The first chapter of James tells us that every good gift, I don't know about you, but sickness ain't a good gift. Disease ain't a good gift. James says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father. So leave today with a simple theology lesson. Good God, bad devil. Keep that straight. That'll help you sort some of this stuff out. If it comes into your life and it's good, give God the glory. Praise Him. Exalt Him. If it comes into your life and it's bad, resist it and know it's from the thief that has no intention but to steal, kill, and destroy. Resist Him steadfast by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God and by the grace of God. Do warfare against it. Good God, Amen. bad devil, God is good all the time. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Understand something. God does not send cancer. He does not send car wrecks. He does not send catastrophe to his children. I want to remind you, he don't have any of that stuff anyway. Read about heaven, where he's from. It says when we get there, all this stuff, you know, sickness and pain and, and death and all that stuff, we're not going to see it there. All that stuff is a thing of the past. He don't have any of it to sin. So we've got to get our faith on the same side and in the same fight. We've got to get on the same side and the same fight that God is on. As Dr. Pike would say, are you with me, church? We must determine that we are not going to receive the grace of God in vain in any area of our life, but we are going to fight the good fight of faith as long as we have breath. I want you to understand, church, I believe that it has to become a conviction in us that we resist and that we fight sickness and disease like we do sin and temptation. We can't be passive about it. We can't just think, oh, I'm tough. I've been through this before. I'm just going to wear this out. How many of you, you know, we've all done that. I'm just going to wear this one out. Well, how about in all of that brawn you got? How about you mix some faith with that and say, God, you did something for me so I didn't have to do this on my own. You did something for me to ensure that I would come out of this thing with a victory and I, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to fight this thing in the name of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this passage of Scripture. Isaiah 53, it's classic on healing. I like the way it starts out. Who hath believed our report? 
Selah. Stop right there just a little bit, Christian. When it comes to sickness and disease, God says, Who has believed our report? Oh, we all of us do it. We got to go to the doctor. We got to have some blood tests drawn. We got to do this. We got to do that. We say, Y'all pray with us that there'll be a good report. And we're waiting on the doctor to give us a good report. God says, Who has believed our report? It's crucial information right there. You believe what God says about it? Well, let's read on. And to whom is the strong, I'm putting in the word strong, okay. The strong arm of the Lord revealed. For he, hath, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes. Don't forget those stripes. When you're fighting symptoms. When sickness seems to be coming upon you. When your doctor is talking about all kind of things that this don't look good, here's what it could be, and we, you know, all these things start running through your mind. Do not forget those stripes. Do not minimize the purpose of those stripes. For it says, with his stripes, we are healed. I believe it would be appropriate if I ask you to repeat that phrase with me. We're going to do it together in just a minute. I'm going to say, we're going to say it together. With his stripes, we are healed. It's a proclamation. It's a declaration. It's what God said about you and I as his children, okay? All right, here we go. With his stripes, we are healed. Let that get plumbed down in here, okay? Hallelujah. Let that truth get to the very area in your body where there's pain today. Let that truth get to your mind that has already overprocessed about what's going on in your body. Let that truth get there with his stripes. We are healed. Now, just so you know, there's not a play on words. The Strong's word there in verse 4, the Hebrew word for griefs, comes from a word that means malady, calamity, and anxiety, and King James translates it as disease, grief, and sickness. And the word sorrows comes from the, uh, uh, the original word Maccabee. And it means anguish and affliction. King James translates it as grief, pain, and sorrow, and this word where it says, by his stripes we are healed, the original word is rafa, and it means this, to mend. I was fooling around last night, last thing I was doing before I went to bed, had on one of my nice shirts, and I bent over to fix something and ripped it. He 
It ain't my nice shirt right now. But I put it aside because I, I believe my wife can probably mend it. She can fix it. She can, that word literally means to stitch together. The part of you and I that gets broken. Calvary provided a provision whereby we could be mended and fixed. Give God some praise today, church. Hallelujah. I wish I had more time to talk about this. I wish we could read other translations. But the crux of the matter is that Calvary provided a twofold cure for what the enemy was and is able to throw our way. Calvary provided both a spiritual and a physical cure. God's covenant name. Jehovah Rophe declares, Jehovah our healer. He revealed his, his name. He wants us to understand our God is a healer. God's covenant in both the Old and New Testament declares that he's a healer. The life and ministry of Jesus Christ in teaching and in practice declares that he's a healer. The present good news gospel message of Jesus Christ today declares in Hebrews 10, 38, Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever. The gospel ministry of Jesus portrayed to us a very important detail about the Father's will to heal. I want you, I'm going to give you a homework assignment, okay? Because we ain't got time to look at all of it. Go to the gospels. I encourage you to do this whenever somebody came to Jesus. Go to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Whenever the Scripture says he was out preaching and teaching in the multitudes, and it said that multitudes came out, all of them that were sick and diseased and demon-possessed, and they cried out to him for his healing. And you know what it said on every one of those? You can't find one that does it. He healed them all. As a matter of fact, that's another one of those phrases. Do a concordance check. That phrase, I think God wanted us to get it. It's reveal, it is spoken over and over and over. He healed them all. A-L-L. -L. Hallelujah. The multitudes came out by the thousands. And anywhere there were sick and afflicted, he healed them all. The desperate came crawling in the press, desiring to touch but the hem of his garment. The man whose friends uncovered the roof and let him down in the place where Jesus was teaching. The blind who was crying out on the side of the road saying, If thou wilt, you can make me whole. Jesus' answer was always the same. Two words. I will. I will. Read it for yourself. Jesus said himself, if you see me, you see the Father. The words that I say are the words of my Father. The works that I do are the works of my Father. I want to say this again and believe God that it gets etched into your mind and your spirit today. It is God's will to heal you. Yes. 
It is God's will to heal you. There is no way to read the Bible. There is no way to read what was prophesied and what Jesus purchased. There's no way to read it without concluding. God wanted you to have the fullness of his grace to such an extent. He made such a provision. Jesus paid such a price. It's God's will to heal you. Listen to me. Before you feel the symptom, before you go to the doctor, before you have the test, before you hear the result, you must hear the good report. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It is God's will to heal you. God's will over you and I is that we be saved, healed, and delivered. Hallelujah! The scripture says that God is no respecter of persons. He's not setting up our time to figure out if it's his will to heal you or not. He's already determined that. He's not trying to figure out if it's his will for you to go to heaven or could it possibly be his will for you to go to hell. He's already figured that out. He said he's not willing that anybody perish. Because he's a good God. Because he is good all the time. Amen. So you've got to get it settled in your spirit that it's God's will to heal you. I want to declare to you today that miracles await the body of Christ when we fully embrace his grace. A miracle ministry awaits the body of Christ when we have fully embraced this grace. I'll say it one more time. Won't you go ahead and be stand up with me?